Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where I've been teasing you with this vegan chicken pot pie for far too long. The crust is the perfect blend of flaky, tender and buttery tasting, even without dairy butter. Inside the filling is creamy and hearty and full of my best vegan chicken so far, chickeny chickless seitan. But before we dive in, I've got to thank the kind people who helped bring this video to you. Vera, Holly, Robin, and Moody Panda. Please hit the thumbs up button if you liked their suggestion. Sometimes I make things just because you mentioned them because, well, I am easily influenced when it comes to food cravings. If you want your comment featured in a future video and perhaps influence me into making a certain recipe, Please keep doing what you do and feel free to make a recipe request in the comment section below. Now, back to our pie at hand by making some simple vegan pie crust dough. Start with cutting up some good vegan butter. You want the kind that comes in sticks and is formulated to behave like butter in baking. Avoid anything that is spreadable right out of the fridge. Then chill the pieces in the freezer for 15 minutes. And actually, I like to chill all the ingredients and tools in the freezer for 15 minutes before making the pie dough by hand because that really helps to get great results every time. After 15 minutes, retrieve your large chilled mixing bowl or food processor bowl if you have a good sized food processor you can use. They are actually really great for making pie dough and I have those instructions on marystestkitchen.com. But today, let's do it manually and measure out 250 grams of all-purpose flour. If you were a robot who could measure perfectly consistent 120 cup scoops every time, it would be 2 cups and 4 teaspoons of flour. But I'm guessing you're not a robot, so I highly suggest measuring your flour with an inexpensive kitchen scale like this. Then add a teaspoon of sugar or sweetener for flavor. And a half teaspoon of salt. By the way, I just like pink because it's pretty on camera. Regular table salt is just fine too. Since I have it handy, I'll mix that together with my chilled pastry knife, but a whisk would probably make more sense. On the other hand, then we'd have one more thing to wash afterwards. In any case, get your vegan butter out of the freezer, and with that pastry knife well dusted in flour now, get to cutting the butter into the flour. If you don't have a pastry knife, you can hold together two knives for a similar effect. After 30 seconds or so, the butter chunks should be kind of evenly chopped in there. The biggest chunks should be about the size of a large pea. A little bigger is fine, though I don't want to make them too fine. Next, get your ice water from the freezer. Chip away the surface if it froze over on you. And measure out 3 tablespoons into the flour. Stir it with a fork, and you guessed it, a chilled fork to hydrate the dough without melting the butter. Now for the slightly tricky bit, adding more water, just a tablespoon at a time, and stirring in between each one to add just enough water, but not too much, so the dough can form these large clumps. And so it's just hydrated enough to stick together easily when we grab a bit and squeeze it quickly. Yes, I think we have it. So using quick and light movements, bring the clumps together into a rough dough mound. Put it on our clean work surface and ever so briefly work it so it sticks together. Then divide it into two even parts. One will become a top crust and the other a bottom crust. And make them into balls. Now we need to seal them in plastic wrap or other such containing strategy to eliminate the air contact and so inside the dough can evenly hydrate while it sits in the fridge for at least an hour. While you wait, it's the perfect time to make the vegan chicken pot pie filling. So make sure you have all the ingredients, though you can adjust them a bit to what you have on hand and the flavors you prefer. And if you do, please let me know your spin on this vegan chicken pot pie in the comments below. For example, I made this vegan chicken pot pie with all the traditional ingredients, like carrot, peeled and sliced into batons and then diced. And celery, 
chopped up the same way. 90 grams or 3 quarters of a cup each. But if you watched my diet update from two videos ago, you know we are on a break. So it's not cheating if I substitute them with something else. Good thing onion has never done me dirty. We need it in the same size dice and in the same amount. With our veg prepped, we also need our vegan chicken, which of course you have handy at all times, right? Because if you and wheat are still going steady, I fully expect you to have chickney chicle seitan at the ready as part of your regular rotation. It's just the most versatile vegan chicken you can have. You've probably already seen it in my vegan chicken and broccoli, vegan coconut curry chicken, vegan buffalo pizza, and vegan sesame chicken, right? With this incredible meaty texture already infused with savory flavor, it's perfect for this pie filling. You'll want two cups chopped or torn. That's 260 grams. Finally, get the rest of your seasonings and frozen veggies together and let's take it to the stove. Heat some cooking oil in a large skillet or as I always like to use my trusty wok. And as you can see here, I'm using coconut oil, refined coconut oil so it doesn't have that coconut flavor. Whoops. This is a little more than I need, so I'll scoop some out. Save it for later. Check that it's hot enough, and in comes the chickeny chickless seitan. We just want to saute so it gets browned on one or two sides. Lovely. Now we can turn off the heat and transfer these to a bowl to rest. and add back that bit of coconut oil from before. Drop in the onion, celery, and carrots, and get the heat back onto medium and saute until the onion gets sweet and translucent. About seven minutes should do it. Let's make some room now, and drop in a teaspoon of grated garlic and just a quarter teaspoon of grated ginger to add a subtle warmth to this dish. Stir fry for a couple seconds and mix some roux. Now we're gonna need some more oil, about a tablespoon of coconut oil or vegan butter would be nice too if you prefer. Sprinkle in a quarter cup of all-purpose flour and fold the veggies back in. Now we can slowly pour in a cup of plain plant-based milk and a half cup of water. Add a teaspoon of vegan chicken style broth paste, a half teaspoon of white pepper, a quarter teaspoon of poultry seasoning, which of course is an herb blend and doesn't actually contain poultry, and finally a bit of tarragon. Allow the sauce to simmer and thicken up. Turn off the heat, add back the browned chickeny chicle seitan and stir it in. If it's looking too thick, you might add a splash or two of water or plant-based milk, it's up to you. Give it a taste and it should probably be perfect, but you could add salt and pepper if you like. And finally, add a quarter cup each of frozen peas and corn they will cool down the whole mixture, which is important as you don't want this to be hot when you fill up your pie crust. Speaking of pie crust, after your dough has chilled for at least an hour, you can start on rolling it out. Also, get your oven preheating to 425 degrees Fahrenheit while you work. Sprinkle your work surface with a good amount of flour, and don't forget to flour your rolling pin too. Squish the dough flat at first and then you can roll it out. I like to use short strokes from the middle outwards and turn as I go. As before, we wanna work quickly so the vegan butter inside the dough doesn't have a chance to melt and get messy. Don't be afraid to add extra flour so nothing sticks. When I'm getting close to the size I think I want, I'll check with my pie pan just to make sure. Make sure there's enough room all the way to the edges and over the sides. 
Now I'll carefully flip up the dough, get the pan under there, and place that bottom crust dough. Press it in lightly so you can feel the dough right up against the pie dish. And let the extra hang over the edges. You could put that in the fridge while you work on the top pie crust dough. We're going to roll it out in exactly the same way. Since I want this out of the way, I'll transfer the top crust to a baking sheet just temporarily. Fetch your pie dish from the fridge and get your filling out too and fill her up. Now comes your bravery test. Pick up your tender top crust dough, using your rolling pin to help maybe, and place it over the filling. Lightly press the edges. And now you can trim off the excess dough that is hanging over the edge. I find scissors work great for this job. Next, I like to tuck the top edge over the bottom edge for a nice seal. And finally, you can decide whether to simply crimp the edges with a fork or flute the edges. Hmm, which looks nicer? Tell me what you think in the comments below. But I kind of like the wavy look of a crimped fluted edge. <laughs> this is me in real life, I can't decide on things. Now, it is a little bit silly, but I like it. Make a hole at the very top and a few slashes for the steam to escape. Then for a final touch, melt a bit of refined coconut oil and brush it over the top. This will help the crust brown nicely. Finally, when your oven is fully preheated, it's ready to bake. 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 to 55 minutes. Every oven is different, of course, so you're going to look for a medium golden brown color. Beautiful! Since you've probably been working on this for a while and smelling the delicious pie aroma while it's been baking, you'll want to dive right in. But it will be lava inside, so please wait at least 10 to 15 minutes before slicing. Doesn't that look heavenly? Super comforting, super tempting. So tempting that even though y'all know I made this for you and not for me, I couldn't help myself. The pie crust is flaky and buttery tasting. The filling is so creamy and hearty and full of flavor. 100% worth it. Tell me, who would you make this pie for? Thank you so much for watching my friends. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and don't forget, the full printable recipe is linked in the video description. Coming up next, the crispy, airy bread that I've been working on for literally years. I mean, it's been a decade. And it's finally perfect. Get ready for the last gluten-full recipe on this channel for a while. Can you guess exactly what it is? With that small mystery and huge hint, bye for now.